everybody, we're back. It's uh, it's Kelly Dixon with the breaking, uh, breaking Bad. Isn't that terrible? No, it's with the, wow. no, 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 I want to keep that part. Down. No, all right. All right. with the Better Call Saul Insider podcast. It's so funny because our family is kind of the same, so it's like it just feels like we're back together with the that's true with the, with the Breaking Bad. But uh, the Better Call Saul Insider podcast. Thanks everybody for listening. Um, we're going to talk about episode one hundred and five, and one hundred and five is called Alpine Shepherd Boy, and it was written by Bradley Paul. And directed by Nicole Cassell. Or Cassell. One of our new directors this year. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful director. She's done a lot of indie stuff. Um, I think a friend of mine has done some editing for She her. directed the Woodsman. the Woodsman, which so is an incredible good. movie. Yes. Anybody who hasn't seen that should see that. Um, I'm here with Vince Gilligan. Hey, hey, hey. Co-creator of Better Call Saul. <laughs> with the other co-creator of Better Call Saul, Peter Gould. hi <laughs> Yes! <laughs> We're here with a special guest, um... Uh, also, Ray Seahorn, who plays Kim. Hi, yeah. Uh, my assistant and sometimes co-editor, Chris McCaleb. Hello. And Vince's assistant, uh, Jen Carroll. Hi. Hey, great. Thanks, everybody, for showing up today. Today is uh, Saturday. We're here on Saturday afternoon. So and I guess and the- it's still Valentine's Day. Yes. And, and we just found out we just found this podcast is uh, top ten. On iTunes. We did. I have a friend uh, who, who emailed me about 20 minutes ago. My friend Steve uh, emailed me about 20 minutes ago and said, Hey, Kelly, your po- I just opened up the podcast app, I guess, on AT- on, uh, on iTunes or iTunes or it's Apple. It's the Apple, the Apple the podcast, Apple podcast. And, and he said, uh, and he sent me a photo of it and he said that we were actually top five. But then when Peter opened it up, we were actually top seven or something. Hey. And as of this recording, it's at number 17. So it's seriously. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> but hey. thank you, everybody. This is so awesome for Thanks us for because, listening. I mean, we're like up there with all the, like all the great ones, like uh, the uh, cereal is in there and. And Mark NPR Barron. Fresh Air. We're taking the iron down. Yeah, we, and This American Life, one of my very favorites. But keep listening because we have the truth about Adnan. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> wow. get into that. It's, yeah, we got we're gonna we got some really? we got some shocking new evidence about Adnan. <laughs> Uh, I actually have done some triangulation on the phone calls, uh, <laughs> and it's it's hidden actually in inside uh, inside this episode. Oh, okay, right. As a former Best Buy employee, I feel like I have a lot to add to That's this right. conversation. Was there a pay, <laughs> was there a payphone inside your Best Buy? That's my question. In in two thousand five, yes, All yes, right. there was. All right, there we go. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so lost. I'm the only person that's yeah, Vince, you, Vince is, I haven't uh, heard cereal. Vince is like, I like so cereal. Like cereal's not, delicious. Yeah. Uh, uh, exactly. Anyway, we should uh, we should get along with uh, with episode 105, and um, I guess we could start with um, all of our titles up to now, and I believe all of our titles after this episode all end in the letter O. And this one would have too. <laughs> we Why what happened? Talk about this? We desperately wanted to call this episode Jello. Jello. And, and what happened? Uh, we they were we were not allowed to name the episode Jello, and it kind of it kind of harshed our buzz and slowed our roll in terms of ending every uh, title with an O. Because really? that's actually where it started. I don't I know if we want to talk about that, but that's where it's, that, it, it was at the lunch table. And yeah, we started, it, yeah. it was, it was talking about calling it Jello, And then it was like, whoa, it's at, I think you guys both were like, everyone could end in O. And we started just brainstorming words that end in O and figuring out, oh, that's kind of like that episode. That's, and then we were like, you know, searching words and end in O. Yeah. It was like, it was like a really advanced game of Scrabble. Yeah, yeah. Like huh. Miho, Nacho, mm-hmm. and then, Uno. Uno. then we, well, then we figured, well, you Uno. call the first one Uno, which means one. That's and you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll joke it aside. You know what though? <laughs> hey, M and M's was not allowed to be used in ET, and look, it was the best thing that happened for. So uh, for be really Reese's good pieces. for Alpine Shepherd Boy. Right. Although having said that, Reese's Pieces uh, is still <laughs> outsold by M and M's about a billion to one, <laughs> even after ET. Put them on yes, the map. But it's not on the ET movie. Uh, that's true. It's not I ET's favorite tree. So it's called Alpine Shepherd Boy because. Because Bradley Paul, who wrote this episode and did an excellent job writing it, mm. uh, I like that title. And of course, it's a reference to uh, Mrs. Strauss, who comes down on her <laughs> on her stair chair. <laughs> comes in a view. Is that what those are called? Yeah. I, well, I, 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 that may not be the proper uh, industry term, but I call it a. It's stair the chair. Harmar stairlift. The Harmar stairlift. The Thank Harmar you, Corporation was thrilled. <laughs> 
No, seriously, they were, and uh, they're and they're a wonderful product, uh, which helps a lot of people uh, with mobility issues. Uh, was used in this episode, <laughs> and the uh, the actress uh, Carol Her- Herman. Carol Herman Carol is a really Herman. Sweet very lady. funny, very, an excellent actress. But she comes down into view, and she says, "I found the Alpine Shepherd boy," <laughs> and it's. <laughs> <laughs> She also has my, had my favorite line on her uh, on her audition. She said, mm-hmm. "Moxie is in such short supply these days." Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> did you guys install the chair the, the chair lift? I did personally. No, but I, I, mean, I was there I with the screw gun. Alley. Did you, you know. guys install that? Yes, our 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 okay. our, uh, our excellent uh, uh, W. Gilpin and his excellent construction team uh, put it into that house. And Nikki, which is, and Nikki Cassell selected the location. I think it was one of the which reasons. Which is a location. Se- she selected yeah. that location partially to set up that sh- great shot she has. Yeah. We're going a little bit out of order here. That great shot she has with uh, with Bob in the foreground yeah. and the uh, the stair I chair in the background. That well, that's shot. one of the things that, that is kind of a hallmark of, of Breaking Bad and also this show that, you know, the, the one thing that you, you have always said, Vince, that you like to have things that – you don't normally see on television you like to see on television like long shots that take that you know you're very patient with that so we uh we did that that i so that's love that's a wonder and it sits there and i mean you're it, it sits there and it sits there <laughs> and then it sits there some more and then and i love it i yeah. love it it makes me laugh every time nikki uh nikki casella directed this episode did a wonderful job i love i love her shot making this episode and nikki uh, came to us through Melissa Bernstein, our, our uh, excellent producer, who had worked with uh, Nikki on Rectify, because because Melissa also produces Rectify and Halt and Catch Fire. Uh, she's lazy. She's that she's Melissa. the laziest person I know. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to work more. Right. She's timed it out very well, so she'll come back and do uh, second season of Better Call Saul. But we we miss her. We, we miss her. I miss her a lot. Her. She's uh, over in Atlanta and. Uh, you know who I less, uh, miss uh, is that little booger, that little uh, son of hers. He's yeah. the cutest little guy. Yeah, he really yeah. is. Our boy. Yeah, our boy. Any, anyway. And it's a unique episode. It goes from it goes from the kind of the biggest comedy scenes that we've done, the most the most the most openly comedic scenes that mm. we did to some some very very dramatic stuff. Yeah, it is yeah. sort of a sort of the the reinvention of Saul Goodman, or excuse me, of Jimmy McGill at this point. Um, one of a couple that have happened already too. It is. So it is. Um, <clears throat> this show, this show takes some wide swings. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, 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 tonally. I mean, hopefully, always it feels in control. <laughs> hopefully, but uh, it is. It takes some wide swings. Uh, and then this episode has, as Peter said, this episode has some of the widest. Well, let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. <laughs> Nobody got that. Mm, I got it. <laughs> what is it? I, <laughs> it's from the Sound of Music. Oh, yeah. when, when you read your. Begin with ABC, Kelly. You sing. You mm-hmm. begin with. Um, okay, so uh, let's start at, at the beginning. Uh, police actually come for Chuck yep. because the neighbor has reported <laughs> him for stealing her paper, yep. mm-hmm. which he really didn't steal. He left he, her five he, bucks. He, you know, he actually he did steal. He did steal it. I think that's not your choice to leave money. You still stole it. Uh, yeah, you know, true. I don't really that's think true. they're there because uh, I would say she's the police aren't really there because a uh, newspaper got stolen. I, I think it was more. He just looks weird. This is a guy who who who's been living in that house for a long time. He cut off all the electricity. He yeah. never comes out, yeah. and then he comes lurching out with a uh, lurching out with blanket. a space blanket. Comes mm-hmm. running right up to her house. I, I think it would be kind of scary for this lady. Yeah. And then he then he goes whirling around and heads back inside. I think but the why next should the police the next, be called? The next time she he might be coming out there with a knife. I think she's but scared. Why of the him. She's scared. Yeah. I think she's scared. I think of she him. should get over it and take, I, take, yeah, take the four dollars and fifty cent. Yeah. 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 I, 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 she's a prominent lawyer. I, my favorite though is I is is I love I'm on how her side here. I love how really? he I'm starts. On, I'm on his, that's I'm right. On. But I love how he starts to spout to the law to the policeman outside. Oh, that's right. And I think if he had just opened the door and handed them the paper, they would have said, "Don't do that again," and they would have mm-hmm. left. And they would have given her back her paper, and then like, "Let's go have a donut." But anyway, so yeah, so he they totally yeah. you know pull some old. So they go. Thing, like, ba- I just wear a weird blanket. I couldn't find my my robe. Yeah. And, and you know what? You know what? If he if it were Jimmy who were in this situation, I don't think that this would have ever escalated the way it did. Yeah. I think Chuck is trying to play it uh, sort of sort of Chuckish. He's trying to he's trying to explain himself. Uh, in a sort of earnest way, and it just mm. it just gets worse and worse. Do you yeah. think Chuck doesn't know that he looks as strange as he looks, and that his behavior is as strange as it is? I mean, is that part of the problem? I what do you think? Hey, what do you think? 
I I think he thinks it's distressing, but not as odd as everyone else does. Interesting. I think I think I think that's an interesting take. I think add to that, I think he is a man who is desperately trying to hold on to his dignity. Uh, Definitely. And he, yeah. I think he does not. I don't think he wants to be in this position. He 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 clearly from the first episode he says I will beat this. I will get right. over this. And I think I think he's desperately trying to hold on to his dignity. Yeah. And uh, and that's what makes it sad for me. But this is uh, it's a scary moment. And and when that door gets kicked open by the cops, uh, excellent uh, uh, photographically excellent work by Nikki and Arthur Albert, our DP, and. And uh, Ted, our colors, uh, did a great job making That's the right. making the light really blow out completely blinding white. And then uh, and then our excellent uh, sound team, uh, Nick Forshager and uh, and uh, Larry and uh, Kevin, our mixers, uh, did a great job uh, with the uh, that those sound effects that are really. I don't know how it plays on your TV, but uh, it depends on your TV, I guess. But in the uh, in the audio playback in that big sound stage, it really put our teeth on edge. The sound we, effect. Yeah, there's something, and there's there's all kinds of dental drill sounds yeah, in there, yeah. and it's really it unleashes them when they get to do something that's that's a little bit subjective like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so much of their lives are concerned with the, uh, making the uh, show, um, any show, sound like real life. And so when we get to do something that's sort of subjective, it, it, I, I think they, they just they just tear into it. And those guys, those I, guys I are just the best. Love, they are the best. <laughs> they do a great job. I just want to deviate a little bit. I know that you want to work with Michael McKeon, and you have done it on the X-Files. Yeah. Rain Can you and Peter yeah. talk a little bit about what what your thought was in in this character, though? And, and what, you know, why you were going to have Jimmy's brother have this kind of condition and... Where you How came up with the condition, you know, and uh, to me, it was, this was the the, in, the invention of uh, of Chuck was, was one, maybe the key thing that happened figuring out the show because it it uh, I think our, our biggest challenge going into this was to find the humanity of this character, and now it seems self evident that this guy is you know that Jimmy McGill is is human and he's vulnerable and he's struggling, but it, it wasn't self evident to us at the beginning, and I, I don't remember how it happened, but um, we had this image of him in a position of having to take care of a family member of his, yeah. of his brother and the more we talked about this brother uh the more i started feeling sorry for both of them yeah. I, I felt i felt emotionally connected to both of them and that that to me was a big breakthrough because saul goodman as much as we loved the character as much as we loved writing him there was something uh, there was something. It was a lack of like emotional connection to him. I don't know. I, I don't know how to put it exactly. This guy. This guy grounded Saul so deeply. And I think then I, when we opened the writers' room, I think the question really was why. Why is Chuck a recluse? And we thought we thought a lot about it. And we watched uh, one movie that was uh, kind of influential for us was the movie Crumb. Which, yes. in which, oh, which our, such, a our movie. Crumb, such a good movie our oh, crumb such and, and that's such a wonderful yep. movie it's really really worth seeing uh, because uh, there is the, our crumb who seems so odd when you meet him uh, has gains depth when you meet his brother who is who is twice as weird as our crumb is and in fact it may be as much or more of a genius than yes. Crumb is, but can't deal with life. But and less functional. And less yeah. functional. Far and whose less functional. Name, whose name is Charles. Whose name is Charles. Yeah. And, you know, we were also, we were just, you know, we were thinking about this and uh, the, the, the dependency between the brothers. And uh, I, I, just, to me, that was where the depth of the character really started. He started popping for me at that point. Yeah. Uh, and I, that was where I got, I got really attached to him. That, that that crumb was, as I recall, was a definite inspiration. And this this poor unfortunate gentleman, the real life gentleman in the movie, mm -hmm. is it comes. Is, it's just it's a sad, you know, uh, it's a victim of depression. Uh, and, 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 Chuck, and and so and, the, and, and so this is not. Do not take it too yes. literally. Yes. Uh, our Chuck uh, versus Jimmy. Do do not take that too literally. It was definitely an inspiration, but this is not. I wouldn't say it was much more than that. Although oh. we did allow the name to inspire us as well. That's, that's uh, that is true. I mean, it, it, Charles McGill is nothing like uh, Char Charles Crumb. I mean, yeah. they really they really yeah. are two very different, yeah. two two very different guys. And I, th I think it's at this point in the show, it's it's an open question. Well, actually, this is the episode where we start <clears throat> investigating 
what is this illness Jack yeah. has? That's kind of why and I brought who that. Be- and What's who, the reality be- of who it? believes it? There who is a plan in? here. That's kind of why I brought yeah. this. Up. And, and I think I think you know, and it's it's probably maddening sometimes for folks listening because you, you say I, I get the question all the time. Where'd you come up with this idea? How did you come up with that idea? Where did this come from? And I'm maddeningly vague, and I'm not being evasive or coy. I don't remember 99 times out of 100. Hmm. And it's because you just, it, it all flows over you. And the, the writer's room is just endless hours, endless days, <laughs> weeks, months. And you don't remember, I don't anyway, not the way my brain is wired in particular. I don't remember who said what or who said what when. or, But, but reverse engineering it, I think it could be added here that, I think one thing that intrigued this, tell me if I'm wrong, Peter, Mm -hmm. if you put, at least initially as we thought of it, if you put Chuck and Jimmy together, they make one perfect lawyer. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I mean, somehow they fill in, was that that line in um, uh, Rocky, I guess, we fill in in each other's gaps. And Mm -hmm. it's like uh, Mm -hmm. the one one guy is is an absolutely brilliant lawyer, although Jimmy is no slouch himself as a lawyer, to be honest. But the one guy is scrupulously honest and, and abides by the strictures of the uh, New Mexico bar. The other guy does not. The other, but but the other guy uh, has this amazing ability to entertain and be and have this He's gift. Very of gab street and, smart versus book smart. Yeah, it's street smart versus very book much. smart. And it's <clears throat> book smart. And if you could put them both together with a magic wand, you'd probably have the perfect lawyer. And I think that intrigued mm-hmm. us from the get go. That 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 concept. Yeah. Absolutely. They're also sort of, they seem to me like psychologically also like each other's yin and yang. Like the yeah. danger, yeah. the dangers of thinking that you are a saint and the dangers of thinking you're basically bad and yeah. that you're a bad person oh, and that both are so corrupting. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's cool. That's well put. I hadn't thought you of that. You guys, I'm going to go now. <laughs> that was good. You're smart, <laughs> Ray Seahorn. Yeah. No, no. I mean, that's it's, it's, you're they, smarter when you wear brains glasses, and beauty. Too. You guys, yeah. and is I, it, also, I usually have a British accent also. That's, that's true. This that is something people mind. don't know. That you're, <laughs> people don't know you're actually from South London. That's right. Yeah. It is, it is, that is an amazing. I'm not doing because, <laughs> because there is no actor in Hollywood anyway. It's the law now. You yes, have right? to be from Britain to that's, be an actor. Or Australia. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, a crown co- colony. Yes. So anyway, um, one of the Anzac nations. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, so so the police, <laughs> the police are basically going to take Chuck away. You know, poor Chuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, and so the uh, next we see Jimmy pulling up in this great great location with the with the the buffalo. I guess the bison on the gate. You know, and he's oh pulling yeah, up. they were they were part of the actual. Game. They were actually they, there. they were not added by that our, wasn't set dressing. That was not, <laughs> and our set. And see, that's uh, <laughs> a, a, a shout out to uh, to our, our, our excellent uh, uh, production design team. If it had been set dressed, the, the very fact you have to ask that, yeah. you, you can't tell the real from the uh, from the Hollywood. Is, is the kettle is, is for the Kettleman's sign. set dressing? That is. That's got to be. That is. Yes. Kettleman's. It's on their mailbox. Oh, the kettle. Oh, absolutely. The kettle with the K. Yeah, yeah, I was like, that's the a kettle, very good the find kettle, if it wasn't. The, the, the kettle <laughs> I mean, that's silhouette. amazing. Yeah. Scouting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of scouting, though, I mean, the the, fa- the fun thing about this is as we were talking about this character, this big Ricky character, we started thinking about what kind of house he'd be in. And we remembered a house that had been scouted on Breaking Bad. And this house was originally scouted as uh, a house for uh, Gretchen and Elliot. Right. And oh, really? I, I, I remember and almost being, got the nod for that. And yeah. I, really? we all remembered walking into this house, and there is a room which actually does not appear in this episode, where the owners have uh, an enormous number of big game uh big game trophies there's a, there's a stuffed bear there's i mean it's 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 a it's remarkable so wait was this gretchen and elliot's house the originally or gretchen and elliot's house from episode 5 no 16? from episode 516 oh, okay. 516 yeah uh, it was and it was not of course that is not the house that was used that we ended up using on breaking bad but it, it stayed with it. This is one of the close second. This is one of the advantages of having shot in Albuquerque for umpteen years is that we, we you know we've seen a lot of places. Yeah. So let me ask you though the the exterior by the gate where Jimmy is coming in the gate is that different from the interior? Nope. The in, the same. interior it's of that house is the same. Is yeah, no, good question. It's one of those rare instances where it's all one location, interior and exterior. Because wow. a lot of the time it's not, as, wow. as we know. So, yeah. 
Yeah. And so all of those uh, all of those trophies are actually they actually live at the location. No, 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 they're no. not. Yeah. Those we brought in, but the at the location, <laughs> uh, just about fifteen feet away from the actors, are the real trophies uh, that the owners of the house have. Wow. And very very nice people uh, who uh, were very hospitable. And uh, their house is a beautiful house. Um, that was and Big Ricky, the big guy who plays Big Ricky. I he love this guy. Wait, wait, so wait good. before you get into that though, I'm yes. really intrigued by that like Hummer like like vehicle out there. Yeah. I love Dennis that car. Mil- I Dennis, want Dennis Milliken. That is uh, so fun. I, that that is Milliken. actually owned by a local bookstore owner. Really? really? Yes. Is it? There's a lady who runs a bookstore in Albuquerque, and that what bookstore? Owns, I love that car. It's in the international district. That's huh. what I know. Oh, oh, oh. Is there an international district? There, is, never there is. There is, in fact, an is international like the DMZ? district. What is it? There is an international <laughs> district, and I just know that we drove through it on our way to the bingo parlor. Really? And I got. I, did, I gained I'm that. I gained that trivia. Uh, I think from Al- Alex, one of one of our one of our brilliant location guys. Yeah. And he said that's that's the bookstore. She owns that thing. And it's called a. Scorpion or something, isn't it? That's, that's what, what that I was car told. Is. I was, cool. I was told cool. that it's, it's cool. badass. <clears throat> I want to do donuts in the desert, knock over thousand year old cacti. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Try drive over, you know. Keep going. Something. What else? <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, I just but wanted to say it. that because I love books. that that vehicle. It looks like <laughs> you, you would carry a lot of books. You would carry a lot of Charlotte Bronte and Emily as well. <laughs> she drives out into yes. the desert. So anyway, reads, um, reads she's a nice lady to let us use. So Jimmy, yes, Jimmy has gotten this this newfound sort of. I mean, he's gotten a lot of people calling because of the billboard stunt. Mm-hmm. Basically, he was on television and. And now people are calling him. As we saw in the last episode that he was starting to get uh, uh, calls yeah. on his answering service. All of a sudden, yeah, yeah. he's waving his magic fingers. And then, yay, you know, all of a sudden it says you have all these voicemail messages. That's right. So now he's he's following up on these calls. That's right. And that's why he's going out to Big Ricky's house. So he meets Joe mm-hmm. Berryman. I mean, the actor who plays Big Ricky is named Joe Berryman. He meets Big, Big Ricky. Ricky. <laughs> I love this guy. And and uh, Kira so, Arai, our, our, uh, our New Mexico casting uh wonderful New Mexico casting person uh, found found Joe who lives in Albuquerque. Is yeah, that Yeah, it, he yeah. works out of Albuquerque. He's been on Manhattan and a couple other shows that are there. He has a huge I don't know how we'd never had seen him before, but he's so perfectly foghorn leghorn yeah. He is yes. foghorn yes. leghorn. That's a good yeah. one. That's yes, good but one. he's sincere. You know that he that's that's one of the things that's that's beautiful about him. He keeps he's sincere. it sincere. He and he keeps it just this side of foghorn. That's what really mm. works. He keeps it He's, he, does. He, he walks he the razor. He's not making fun of the character he's playing. No, That's and he's not cartoony. So he's he's almost there, but he's not. He <laughs> keep, he keeps it real, and, and, and so that's a real feat. And, and, and you and I know from living in Virginia, those people exist. Like, it's oh yeah, not like that's oh, yeah. wacky. <laughs> well, this is based on something I tried to do several years ago, which was to see really? for the United States. We so. still have the money with your which picture. Was That's true. That's Secede. Right. Yes, <laughs> that was. Uh, I remember on Breaking Bad season three, yes. you were actually paying us uh, with that money with Gilligan. I was. I was in a. I was in an 800 square foot apartment at the time. But, uh, it would have awesome. been tricky with a shared uh, entrance. Right. So it would have been harder. Right. You know, I, fit a campaign. I approached I'm the federal government, but they, I, I'm curious they were and, less than receptive. And intrigued by that money. Um, I love, you know, Bob. But I love that there's like a there's a there's a couple of times where I think at least two I think where you where Skip has gone to Bob's face while he's explaining that he wants to oh, succeed. Yeah. Skip did a great and job. And he's just it. sitting there mm, Actually, smiling. And, 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 and you know what? And you know what? Credit. <laughs> he's like, "What the hell have I? I thought this was a real client." Credit great. where credit is due. Skip uh, at Curtis Thurber, his Skip's assistant, I believe, uh, cut this this scene. Uh, and so both these guys did a great job editing and, this. And and you're right; those those moments are priceless when you cut to Bob. Bob's expressions are perfect. Look at that moment he says, "I want to secede from the United States." And Bob just smiling. Bob just smiles. And then and then he, there's that hang fire moment he holds it and he's like. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I like, Let's do this. And, yes. I, and yes, I love how he says, this. I will pay you. I'll pay you right now. Yeah, yeah, and Bob's yeah. like, Bob, Ray, he, he, gets Ray. This, he gets this expression. He looks like a though. sick frog. Yeah. He looks, he just gets this frog like expression of, <laughs> of, of greed, just overwhelmed. It's, it's, it's a beautiful moment. And then, and then so big Ricky goes, and this is what I'm very curious about is he goes to get the money. 
the money actually says the sovereign state, I think, of, of Sandia. Sovereign Sandia Republic. <laughs> Sandia, sovereign whatever. Sandia Republic. But he posed in, for so many different styles of portraits. Like oh, did he? He posed yeah, for all the portraits? Uh, like Teddy Roosevelt style. <laughs> and we chose, because his whole yeah. set is littered with these Photoshop That's photos awesome. of him with fish and him with yeah. giant The rhino, game. I think oh there's God. a big rhino yes. or That's something. That's so yes. fun. Yes. Like so that would be fun. Those are all fake. He didn't actually kill a rhino. No. <laughs> and I killed the rhino. Good. our <laughs> art department also did that <laughs> other... Uh, uh, painting that he has that's the bears fighting the lions or something they just created <laughs> that, it's on, I mean, the, on this, the right side this of really is this only was an in art. the zoo would that happen and and and, and the uh, and Bradley had called a few of these things out in the script yeah. uh, it was it was it was a big deal for the I mean the art department uh, once again came through uh, just so amazingly well there uh, you, when you talk about the I also remember the, the previous episode with the billboard which we we didn't even mention uh, that that the wonderful that wonderful picture of uh, Jimmy. Oh my God! How did we not mention Jimmy, that in the last uh, Tony uh, Bennett? The Tony Bennett picture. <laughs> he looks so much like Tony uh, Bennett. I think he, he looks like Adam Sandler in that picture. Uh, I, I agree. I with prefer that. Tony Bennett. Tony. Yeah. I, I, he looks I, like I Tony much, Bennett. Yes. Uh, I prefer the old man references. But yes. he also looks a little like Tony Curtis and Spartacus. As That's he, right. As he, That's as right. he requested. Ringless, ringless, like the bass scene in yes. Spartacus. And for all of the big rookie stuff, it wasn't just our department, but also our prop department were responsible for doing you know the money whereas the art department did the, the painting. So it was all the departments working together yeah. to create this. Okay, so so Jimmy basically feels like, okay, let me go to the next uh, phone call that I got. So he ends up going to see... Roland J. Cox. Roland. Uh, I want to mention, though, when he leaves that house, isn't this the episode that, that in the script was the first time that the stage direction <laughs> appeared that said Jimmy's esteem takes a sharp left? It was in reference to the car, but like, I don't know. All right, never mind. I'll oh, 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 oh no. but, um, that might be. Yeah, as allegory, I had a good time reading those stage directions. <laughs> like, it, he keeps I, getting crushed. It's like, Jimmy's esteem goes downhill. And I was and like, know, the car, oh. it was very funny to me. They're, they're always real. I will That's say good, I like that. that reading the that script for, for Breaking Bad and for Better Call Saul is always a wonderful experience. The stage, these, because, these scripts read more like yeah, novels. These guys are really, really good good with their uh, stage direction. And, and sometimes, even even more descriptive than many of the dialogue lines, just so we get a little bit more flavor. I tell you, when when the new script comes in from the uh, our subcontractors in India, I well, I'm the first one to crack into it and say, <laughs> <laughs> when we get a new one. FedExed in. Oh, I love it. It's like Christmas say, morning. I have FedEx. to say, just as a sidebar, Ray, one of the things that impressed, I mean, of course, I'm impressed that you're, you're reading parts of the script that you're not in. What? Uh, Who but also, read the but not only, not only that, which is, which I think is, is somewhat extraordinary, but you actually come to set when, uh, for scenes that you're not, you're not in. I do. Uh, and that, tell us about that. She's Why, lonely how did, how did that out there start? in Albuquerque. Stop how did, it. How did I, that's, that every time I came to set, two people were like, how bored are you? And yeah. um, <laughs> I wasn't. I mean, I honestly, like, I mean, I, I, I adore my friends and family here in L.A. I mean, but I was in Albuquerque and, and. But even if you had shot here, I probably would have done the same thing. I just felt like you guys are all operating at the top of your game. It sounds like blowing smoke, but it's a free masterclass. Do you want to sit and watch pay-per-view or do you want to watch a free class with Michael McKean and Bob Odenkirk rehearsing a scene or Vince Gilligan or Peter Gold directing or Michelle McLaren or, you know, Jennifer Hutchinson explaining her writing to Colin Buxy or whatever. I mean, I just, it's, it's a no-brainer. And then on top of that, I would say selfishly as an actor, um, the more I was involved with the world and the tone and the beats and everything that's going on when I'm not in scenes, the more it informed my world so, that, you know, so I could help create that and understand what cog in the wheel I am at any given time. Um, and then there's technical stuff too. Like my first, I, was, I came to set, I think nine days before my first scene was shot and just seeing like, oh, okay, this is about how many takes they do. This is the protocol you are allowed to go and um, ask. This is how hot it is in the <laughs> video yeah, village yeah. tent. Yeah, um, no kidding. You know, and finding out, and I, I saw like, oh, they're gonna continue to do what you guys have done so well in the past, which is cinematically, um, you guys use a lot of wides to do pivotal moments. And there's a more contemporary obsession with doing constant crazy close-ups for um, comedic effect and anything poignant or anything that's the joke line is so close up when you know I remember watching Jack Lemmon's films and thinking like 
the saddest thing about that is being able to see him in a wide turn mm-hmm. away and slump his shoulders. And on this show? <laughs> you guys have some, really? but you know what? I, as an actor, you realize quickly, I was like, do not be doing any of that stuff where you save your most oh, don't pivotal do ideas, you know, for the close ups later. Do that. It, it, you need to be playing the entire narrative and yeah. the beats that you want to play all the time. And I yeah. wouldn't have gotten that had I not come to set all the other days. So oh, wow. you don't visit the set for the free Snickers bars and toilet paper. <laughs> You're actually learning things. I, I, I am trying to learn. So that's I'm why I'm there. Learn. That's why I'm yeah, there. Yeah, well, unfortunately, they don't have to keep letting out your skirts like, like they did mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, gin? There's a new pallet of toilet paper here. Lo- loaded into the back of my car. Yeah. But yeah, I did, I did go to Sony. I was always wondering why the toilet paper your house has Sony on it. <laughs> I just, I Ridiculous. need more than most people. <laughs> that's part of the seceding, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so... So we're in jumping I, I, back I, I, to. I, I'm sorry, Kelly, but I just have to say I think it really shows. I it think really all, does. Show. All that, all that, all that extra, and you know, we notice it in yeah. the editing room. Uh, you know, because there's, there's you're the there's only a, good the, actor on the show, that's right? And that's now true. I know why. We notice <laughs> in the editing room. Comfortable but, but exciting. But you do, you do, you look, you you um, because there's it gives it it gives you a select. It's the worst thing is to have an actor who's only going to do it right when it's in a close up because it it forces you it forces yeah. you to go to close up, which I think it's a. It's almost like I mean, it's a it's almost a it's a pro trick actors. If you want a close up, no. But and all joking aside, that's true. Uh, a lot of actors save it for the close up. And, and, and I will say that the majority of your cast, myself included, is um, from theater and live performing a lot, and so there's an awareness to telling the whole story with your whole body, which is unfortunately labeled as acting big. Sometimes yeah. it's very unfortunate people will say that theater people are all acting too big, but it's not that. It's the difference between doing black box. Doing a, having a camera here is like playing a small black box theater with 25 people, but you also yeah. know that um, the people that can't see you behind yeah. you in a you know yeah. 3,000, you need you have to tell the same story with your shoulders, not the one tier that you hope yeah. you squeeze out on yeah. your one and only close-up. Well, we you definitely, can't do it. We right. definitely see that you guys are, I mean, uh, you guys are acting not just with the face, not just with the eyes, not just with the voice, but the whole body. And mm-hmm. and, and sometimes that's, uh, it's it, it, as you say, I mean, just rep- it's it's so much more revealing to see you know a hand or or uh, yeah. or, or another and so, so thank you thank you for all your all your thank hard work. Thank you guys. No, that's, thanks this for is so me informative. There. No, that's really thanks that's for really, being so bored in Albuquerque. That this I is wasn't the best thing you bored. Have to do. I loved it. That really is smart. <laughs> I'm sure there's by some the people way, hanging out on the set before be you get there yeah. to see to see get the rhythm of it and see the way it's done and know what to expect. That's really smart. It's great. Well, and also yeah. you know I was coming to it with a big bigger learning curve than some people, not having not been part of the Breaking Bad. Family, and even though this is completely its own show, there's a shorthand you guys have that I wasn't privy to. Hmm. So it was really it was helpful to sit around and even hear the way um, ideas are bounced around and how much play is allowed. And um, and uh, a lot of people have asked me. Even so, sorry, I just hit the mic. I'm gonna get excused. But um, so the, stop. To, thank you. <laughs> I'm nervous. Making it worse. That, uh, you, no, you, said, you said a lot of people have asked you. So. Yeah, they asked me. Is any of this? Uh, the writing is. Uh, so specific and yet it seems so natural the scenes and part of that is what you guys referenced earlier that you allow scenes to take their time whether it's a shot with silence or it's dialogue and finding out where a scene's going and um, so they asked me if like we improv or anything and people are so surprised for me to tell them that like we don't that like Mm. everything is in the script and um, everybody thought that like really they were like fixing the trash can was in the script I said yeah "Yeah." and that's Mm. what's amazing (laughs) Mm. (laughs) and that's a testament to you guys' writing wow Wow. they're very sweet that. Yeah. You can tell. You can tell people it's all improvised. We won't be hurt. No. You guys let Bob improvise sometimes, right? I was on set a couple of times. I mean, it's all in script. There's a few you know, times he where he was allowed that. to. He talked about that while he was here, and he said he? that he really tries not. He really tries to memorize exactly what they say because there's a reason that they say it in the order that they say. It. I mean, the reason oh yeah, that definitely. They, they put the words down as they put them down. I was surprised as well. Um, and I mean, this is, I mean, you know, I was cutting him from the very beginning, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I mean, I didn't cut the first episode, but it was funny when I was pulling episodes for a ba- that he was in from Breaking Bad, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it was hilarious to watch, you know, some of the things that he did and how much he has grown as an actor, hmm. especially. You know, what's interesting to me <clears throat> that Jen or somebody told me yesterday when we were all in the writer's room uh, yesterday, uh, Somebody had the good idea, wish it had been me, of cutting together all the Saul Goodman scenes from Breaking Bad and putting them onto one reel so that mm-hmm. we, the writers, could could refer to them and mm. make sure we're not forgetting any 
details, no matter how minute, that, that could uh, make Better Call Saul yeah, better? Yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> Uh, well, was that your idea? <laughs> no, no, no. But it was surprising when Chris and I got the uh, the assignment. Well, Chris got the assignment. He was busy, so I started, you know, helping him out with it. And we were, like, surprised that you guys hadn't done that. It we seems obvious we now. Had, we did it with the scripts yeah. right when the room opened up. Before we even <clears throat> had this office, and we were working out of Vince's at the be- very beginning of season one, and we were just talking about what the show yeah. would be. We right. had all of the... The, all the Saul scenes and then all of the Mike scenes printed out the script pages and then any details, any facts, like what right. happened in all the scenes and then mm-hmm. anything we learned about Saul from those scenes. Yeah, no matter how small. But, yeah, but, I haven't, oh, but I, haven't, well, I get the point of the story being, uh, someone told me yesterday, uh, it's, it's done now. The cut is complete and it's three hours. Oh, yeah. Scenes, really? But see, I, I would have just yeah. saw uh, out of 62 episodes of Breaking Bad, I would have guessed, I don't know why, I would have guessed like 45 minutes or something. I didn't realize it was in the show longer. that much. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I would have guessed longer. I guess, I, I guess his shorter. presence, you're thinking about it. People talk about him. Okay. Um, yeah, so right. much that like, and that happens in stories when people talk about a character. Yeah, he keeps living even when yeah. he's not in the scene. And there's so much that he was a part of in Breaking Bad and okay. so many... Yeah, there, there's just so many things and, and little information that he gives out that you've forgotten about. Oh, yeah, you know, that, that's our fear you that, know what I mean? that yeah. he'll say, well, you know, when I had my leg replaced, you know, with, a, with a <laughs> well, Oscar well, Pistorius things, prosthetic. I think I brought this up in one of the previous podcasts, but one of the things that I had forgotten about was that he's talking to Brian about his, ex, his second ex-wife or something. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I guess that has happened in some time before and, you know we met him, and there was also there was also a scene. That but it's we, not right now, so a, we don't know. Uh, there's I mean, a scene that we all remembered uh, as being <clears throat> absolutely pivotal and and giving us important information that was actually cut out of the episode of Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's it's it's, it's great. probably available on a DVD I'm, somewhere. I'm it sure is. it is. Yeah. I'm sure those yeah. those omitted scenes. Boy, do not real, count those against us. Yes. But it would be, boy, it would be a great thing to buy one of those barrel sets right now. <laughs> and have all those omitted Ooh. scenes to look at anytime you well, wanted. Well, you shouldn't be judged by, I mean, you don't have to stay faithful to an omitted scene. Oh, but right? we no, are. No, that's, 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 oh, but we are that's judged. Not. We are. That would be no, so not, not canon. People can't do that. That is exactly yeah. what I'm yes, saying. Yes, they do. Do not, do not, yes. do not, not judge allowed. Do not judge us on anything that had been omitted. No, you can or anything we said on a podcast. You can ding us. It's fair game if we forget something. Yeah, if you chose to take it out. That was in the. Yep. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Well, all right, I'm gonna talk to my people, you guys. I talk to people. tell you that I'm the head of the group of people but that hates I, I kind of want to. You guys have so many great things in this episode. I kind of oh, like the toilet. Anyway, Roland J. Cox, the toilet man. <laughs> Hysterical. Jay, Jay Cox, this guy did such a great actor. job. Talk <laughs> about, sta- talk about staying sincere. And I got to give a shout out to Holly, my girlfriend's family. Her 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 maiden name is Jay Cox, although spelled it's spelled differently. Uh, the way she spells it differently because it, it would never it'd be pronounced Jack Ox by, oh. the, by the actors if it was spelled oh I thought it was actually like a middle name like his one was Roland J. Cox no no but it's, it's J. Uh, Cox J. Cox I put it on uh, ah. I put it on X-Files too at one point nice but uh, this guy Tim Baltz did such a good job this is uh, and tell him tell him the story about Larry oh Larry our uh, our our brilliant sound mixer actually made for us a uh, a talking toilet and vince is holding it right now like a and small it has, novelty it one. looks yeah. like it looks it's a, it's a toy it looks as if it's something they would sell at a gift shop there's a picture of roland on the side and uh, you can actually lift the lid there's a little brown lego in there's it a, there's a lego in it to represent so one of the the, the, uh, the letter blocks so here's how this is this now is press what, press the uh, God press bless the larry because this is what it does here you drop the little block in Give it to me, Chandler. Yeah, wait a minute. Let me do it again. Give it to me, Chandler. I want it all. I want it all. I'm hoping to sell this. All right, I'm no, gonna, I no. just <laughs> took a photo. I'm going to tweet it. Yeah, so good. Make sure it's uh, it's held so the uh, the, oh, yeah. the, so the good, the good it side. It. So yeah. you can see, yeah. not that. Yeah, the, the Here, good give, side. Give a shot. Did you get the good side? All right. So so so, so this scene with the uh, the, the the talking <laughs> toilet. I love this guy. Tim he throws so the good. Throws I was the on set in the there. garage watching that movie. I was on, there's I very few scenes I was not on set for. So <laughs> was the garage a location? or Not that it really matters, but I thought it was kind of fun. Was it something that we built or something that we found? That was a real 
garage. Same. Yes, it was a real garage. Um, so same as it, the rest of the house? Yes. Yeah, was, it, was, was it sort of married to another location that you guys could use it, double up on it, or no? It was just its own thing? I don't remember us going to that house any other time. You guys? No, well, no, but I mean, was there another location nearby? Probably. The answer yeah. is probably oh, well, yes. Well. That we would need our... Uh, someone uh, one of our production folks to answer that but this this guy did a good job because uh he is again it's the same with joe berriman in the previous scene and also with the scene uh coming up with uh, carol herman is is that this is as peter said earlier this is some of the funniest stuff we've had yet on the show and the stuff that it could be argued comes as close to cartoonish as we've done and yet what i think all three of these actors did so well is they kept it just on the inside of cartoonish and it's so, a tribute to Nikki also. It's a tribute to uh, Nikki who directed for having it. having control over the tone. Yes. Uh, and he's so serious about mm -hmm. it, too. And Bradley, who wrote it, who, who right. helped uh, Nikki ensure that it stayed just on the just on this side of crazy, right. cuckoo, cartoonish. Because this guy does a good job, does such a good job playing it because he believes it. He, he does not get that it's anyone would infer right. that this is has a sexual uh come on chandler where did you get the chandler who named him the little kid probably chandler they, probably bradley I, I, oh, okay yeah. i didn't know uh, if it was uh it just uh, i think it's probably just a funny name okay yeah it just sounds and then the funny. toilet lid broke halfway through shooting. oh did yeah. it what? were you Wait, there no i yeah. saw it in the dailies a one time oh, i was there Tim it was Ball. very frustrating how do you break a toilet well what i mean was, i know how i break it it toilet. was in the unveiling he pulled the tarp off and right as he went up there was this amazing and terrible sound of, of something falling and crashing and the tarp breaking. The caught on the lid, and the lid hit the ground and the, broke in half, the porcelain. The tank lid. The tank right, lid, yeah. yeah. And you heard it all happen, yeah. but you couldn't <laughs> see it because the tarp was still covering the whole toilet, Ooh. and no one wanted to pick up the tarp to be like, what, what, what's Yeah, they were pretending, like, us? how long can we do this scene <laughs> and pretend that this didn't happen before oh. we have to show that? And then they had other lids around to replace it, and it turns out not all lids are made the same. Who knew? Like wow. very specific fitting for different toilets, and they had to like run around in is, Albuquerque trying to get a lid that fit the. Is toilet. that like no two cell phone chargers are the same? It's exactly like that. Proprietary. Proprietary it's toilet. Like toilet that. But in Europe, they are. And then there's uh, the Carol and the, the 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 lady on the yeah. Chair, the, the I was going to say the 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 Hummel the Hummel figure will and, and the so titular. Now, yes. Basically, Jimmy is starting to find his. You know what what his future is going to be yeah. in law elder he's, law you know and so he's he, he tells her that i didn't realize it was that cheap to get a will done but he's basically going to do this will for 140 bucks I don't know if we, and and girlfriend has 140 in cash <laughs> yeah, that is right. that is that, she's got it in her little no, coin purse actually that is that is i believe a correct price oh, okay. uh it's actually it can be high Kelly, I hope everyone listening to this gets a will. Everyone just, should so, have everyone a will. Should every have adult will. should Tell every your adult, friends. Every important. adult should have a will. So Hummel had just gone out of business right before oh, we shot oh, really? uh, oh. this episode. Jen, you're going to be on every really? podcast. You are a wealth of information. It, this, that this makes is me my, sad. I know, I know. Us and uh, Sam Catlin. Very, very sad. Seriously? Bad, so right? Hummel had just gone um, out of business? They had, what, the... they had closed, I think, in March, and we were shooting this in the summer. And so we... Had, we had no idea the script was already written to have hundreds of Hummel figurines. And so our amazing clearance person, Kelly, reached out to the Hummel Corporation and they sent us these two gigantic boxes of more Hummels than we could ever imagine. So then the show takes a serious turn. It does. And before you leave, talk about this scene. Well, there's, the, the Bradley, did, uh, Bradley and Nikki and, and the cast did such a great job with the scene in the hospital where Jimmy has to make this uh, decision about Chuck but one of the things I, one, I just want I can't leave without mentioning Clea Duvall mm. amazing who, who I is, love her so much she is such a wonderful actress and she brings yeah. such a gravity and an honesty to this scene you yeah. know and, and she's I've, I've been a fan of hers um, you know for, for quite a long Me time too. it was, it was, so, it was so, so great to have her on the show and she she just she brought it yeah. if I everybody everybody brought it that day uh, and it was it was that's a it was a uh, you were that, there was a, that all I shot in one for, day that I was scene? there for part of it okay. I was there we for multiple days we did, I think it was two days I two was days. there oh, for one, days, I was right. there for one day of it mm -hmm. and uh, you guys were really just tearing it up I mean it was a very it's a very tough scene well it starts uh, with technically uh, it had to be mostly shot with no lights on because that's, Chuck's that's issue right. with electricity that's like right. just, I just remember thinking like we have a ton of people and it 
in one space this, over a long period of time, and now Arthur you're going to turn the lights off. Yes. And you Arthur Albert, right? Arthur Albert, you know, who of course Arthur Albert, which be pro, you know, little little pro, uh, side who shot set many seasons of ER. Yeah, that's right. So right. He's, he's a he's a he's, he's a, hospital a pro. pro. <laughs> he's a pro when it comes, but he's not a pro. Not a pro. It was new territory for him to have to. Have to uh, have to shoot this scene with no lights in the room. So was he the to, hospital a set or is uh, that... that's an actual hospital that we've used many times before on Breaking Bad? Uh, and oh, also, uh, yeah. Is that where Hank got his hand job? Uh, that actually was a set. Oh, okay. The the the, uh, the 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 Hank hand job scene was, was shot it? on our hospital set uh, oh. at, at Q Studios okay. at Breaking Bad. But this this was is that uh, where the twin this was? Is the, same, the one that Jennifer. This wrote? is the same yeah. hospital. Yes, I believe where that where the twin crawled. It's also the same hospital yeah. where Walt was confined after his, uh, his sojourn in the desert in season two. What and about where, Jesse getting beat yeah, up. Um, good question. Well, but definitely where Jesse uh, was hanging out uh, when Brock was poisoned. Oh, and then, uh, yes, and then right. he has his meeting with um, uh, Gustavo Fring. It's and, a, you directed that one. Yeah, it's I spent a lot of time in that hospital. Yeah. It's, it's a very nice facility, and we're very lucky that um, half of it, I believe, is still a working hospital. Mm -hmm. The other half oh, that, that, right? that is empty because we couldn't shoot there if it were a working hospital. Yeah. I mean, I'd, and, and if I had loved ones in a working hospital and a bunch of crew people were clomping I around, I, I wouldn't like that either. So this this works out very well uh, for not just us, but I think for the night shift. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the TV show The Night Shift. Is oh, a, it's, 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 it's an yeah. NBC show that shoots also in Albuquerque. Very nice show. Stu Lyons, our line producer, uh, you know, works on that show And as much well. of our crew, apparently. And, much of, and, and pretty much most of our crew, so... Yeah, yes. Jennifer shout Bob out to the night shift. Yeah, yeah, Jennifer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I think uh, that that hospital is very. Uh, we're, we're lucky it exists. It's a probably, lot of shows probably are probably going to be on some tours. Is what they're saying. It's going to be a tourist <laughs> stop they for a lot of buses. Some, they can make some dough. So basically, um, Jimmy, it's it's really up to Jimmy to possibly commit Chuck. I mean, he's being sort of leaned on to commit Chuck, mm. um, and then Hamlin shows up. That's right. Let me ask you. In his polo. He's like different cool. clothes. The first time we've really yeah. kind of seen him without his pinstripe. Still and him with to go blue, though. Yeah. And, and, and then they have, have the uh, lapels pulled up a little I believe, bit. I yes. believe he does. Which is yes. kind of a douchey look. Is he wearing look. an Argyle vest in that one? <laughs> no, 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 no. But it's sort oh, of a color blocked polo that. I've never so seen funny. a collar collar block like that, but he's it's sort of interesting. He's a fashion icon. He is. He is. <laughs> he is. And the real Patrick is such a we got to get him. Such a thing. nice. He's guy. such a sweet guy. He's, he's so, so not smug or yeah, anything. Yeah. Like yeah. That, you know? He's so such funny a, too. Because he makes when I pickles. saw him, he was like he makes pickles. I'm still eating. And they're pickles. delicious. He was wearing yeah. like like um I mean when I, I think when we first met him he was wearing like um like uh, basketball shorts and tennis shoes and. Yeah, he's know, a very like sweet Under guy. Armour shirts and that kind of thing. He's or, a great guy. He's cool. Yeah. Let me ask you as an actor. Huh. And by the way, do you prefer <laughs> actor or actress? I Be prefer actor. Okay. Do I you? do. I okay. feel like it's a craft and you're one who does it. But I have nothing against people that prefer actress. I, okay. I don't know. Like, you know that I'm, makes I'm, sense. That makes I'm sense. a painter as well. It's like, it's not painters. It Ooh. should be. It's a craft. You are a painter. That sounds pretty good, actually. Painters. Painters? Well, so yeah. then if you're a guy, are you a seamster? A <laughs> seamster. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Like Teamster? <laughs> like Teamster, a Seamster. A seamster. No, you're oh. a tailor. Oh, right. Because you're not yeah. a tail ass. No. I think, I anyway. Think tailors get paid more as than a, Seamsters. <laughs> as, I, as, what? As a, I think so. They shouldn't, but. No, yeah. it's not right. No, it's not right. As an actor, uh, does it get wearisome? In all, all seriousness, does it get. You're doing a scene, you're I'm doing so the scene right in this now. hospital. No, you're doing the scene in this hospital. And it's a meaty scene, but it's like you got to do it over and over and over. It's a yes. long scene. You got to do it from every angle mm -hmm. over and over again, all day long, ten hours straight, eleven hours straight. Does it get Does it get old? Is this like, oh, for God's sake? Especially after your close up is over. I mean, all I'm, no, I mean well, seriously, talked, because you're we talked here, earlier but, about like you don't save things for close ups. Yeah, you guys, and I was never good at that anyway. And a lot yeah. of times your close ups are going to come late in the day anyway. Very so late it's not in the day. like yeah. it's not like you know. So you got do you have to over. marshal your energy and think? I guess. Yeah, and to be honest, like so uh, about the close up things, like so yes, you do know things are in the wides. I never was good at saving things for the close ups, but in all honesty, that is also a skill to know that if you yeah. are shooting fourteen hours mm -hmm. in one scene and then you're going to do it again tomorrow. Um, you know, I'm not one that use, is up there like, you know, procuring real memories to cry or anything like that. And people can do whatever they want to. But um, no matter what you're doing as your craft and your basis to play a scene that, that's emotionally um, yeah. difficult, uh, you can get 
dry from that. Like it can get, sure. it, it is hard to muster that kind of stuff. So when there are very specific emotions that somebody wants, usually your director and your writer and on your set they do, they let you know um, that if there's anything that's actually physically going to become so exhausting that you can't do it 25 times, yeah. they're going to help you to know, you know, maintain the life of the scene here but we're on your we're on your back True. you know and like they try to they try to help you with that energy and Michael McKean took a brunt of a lot of that as yeah. did Bob but Michael shifts in the hospital bed and to play that frailness and to have strength all of a sudden that evaporates and dissipates and yeah navigating that um and the camera often can see him in those scenes That's true. Um, but he got to lie down he did get to lay down yeah um and he was really restrained um oh was he yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they would like um let his wrists out uh in between scenes and bob also had a lot to navigate there so um did they let him up for lunch they did they did um so i'm sorry in answer to your question you did you did have to give thought to yeah. uh yeah. reserving some energy it does it um get old but it does get more challenging to hear the story for the very first time hear yeah. those lines for the very first time be yeah. surprised i can for me in this scene one thing that happens when i walk in um i'm not responding as much when i walk into the hospital room as as chuck stay i take it in that's like it's always um wrenching those any of us who have seen anyone you care about in a hospital bed yeah. look weak it's it, it makes you um it's hard to swallow the first time you um see it but then i immediately see just how much Jimmy physically takes care of his brother. He's yeah. running around turning off light. He's manic. Yeah. He is losing it and is a more concern to Kim in that moment than her brother. And then on top, now the orderlies are going to take Jimmy away. And it's yeah. like, and she's trying to deal with all of that. And, um, uh, I forget my point. Um, there's just a, there was a lot to take in and the scene kept shifting and shifting. And you were there to help navigate the scenes when, um, I'm asked to, say for the record is he crazy is this a real disease and negotiating all of those um you just wanted to keep seeing it for the first time and keep yeah. hearing it for the first time um that's gotta be tough and kim is so yeah. uncomfortable she, she's she, so, she uncomfortable. Seems so uncomfortable to be involved suddenly yes. in this family and you this were, family yes. moment yeah. and you guys were great with discussing with me that it was very specific and this is one thing where your writing is very specific like we were saying earlier you can't just kind of do the lines it is specific the wording and the way they are um chronon the chronology of them and everything else because chuck asks me um well kim you know have i ever done anything i forget the exact line i'm sorry um have i ever done anything that seemed to to, to, to make you think that i'm crazy or right yeah. and and my line is well i'm not a doctor now i could have played it off the cuff and kim would get out of um having to own too much of it which i think uh, uh, a person uh, which I thought Kim in that moment would like can I please just not can yeah. I just sink into this wall how can I get out of here yeah. and yet I care about both of them but Jimmy interrupts it he won't let me go he interrupts it with like of course not he looks at me like yeah do he asked me to do it for him and mm -hmm. that made it very hard mm -hmm. and I know we, we played that moment a couple of times yeah. because I didn't want to put too much weight on it and we weren't really answering the question of does she believe or doesn't she believe yeah, yeah. just yet and and I don't think it's a black and white issue for yeah. her. I love um, how much thought you put into this. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we, because believe me, we put this much thought into it in the writer's room. I love that. Uh, yeah. No, I, think the, yeah. I think the truth of her situation in, comes out when she's out in the hallway with the doctor as far as um, the truth of the matter is it can't keep going. I say yeah. something to the effect of like yeah. something has to something yeah. has to be done um this doctor i mean the doctor was great clay had developed it a wonderful laid out like the doctor she's i mean as the the character is uh, played wonderfully by clay but the she's right i mm -hmm. mean everything she says is perfectly reasonable yes i mean what if he burns his house he could what if he himself. burns the whole damn neighborhood well, we, I mean, yes. it's, we love it I, I love a scene where all the characters are right you know where yeah where those they, are my they, favorite they have they have everybody has a really good argument yeah and it's not it's not clear cut who's right and who's wrong and it's it's, it's so much that's that's one of the things that makes the scene so great is that we have you know all these terrific performers and they yeah. all have a, a defensible point of view but to be honest, it starts with the writing, and that's not just yeah. blowing smoke up you guys' ass. It starts with the writing that all all points of view are well represented, and it's mm -hmm. always going to make for a smarter scene. Well, like watching nice. somebody get bulldozed is like, who cares? I I like how you put that. <laughs> watching someone get bull yeah bulldozed. Is I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna step out. All Thank right. you guys. Thank you guys for. I know you're gonna. Happy oh, Valentine's oh, oh, Day. Oh, oh, I'm going to do it officially. I'm stepping out. So are you gonna? You have a heart shaped tub uh, full of bubbles. Yeah, tell uh, the listeners where you're going. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. It's a heart shaped. I'm going to heart shaped tub full I, of bubbles. I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to park my wife. She's going to sad. Be, you'll be got, alone. But. She's going out. She's going out to a, a deserted field somewhere, and she doesn't know what's going to happen. But in fact, I'm going to. I'm going to parachute down. Wow. With a a heart shaped. A heart shaped parachute. And, I like uh, it. And I'm going to be dressed like a uh, Cupid. A, well, actually, like a giant Reese's Pieces. So it's, uh, it's, <laughs> that's it's, even I, better. Yeah, I, so I, sexy. So you're so romantic. It's, it's, I think hmm. it's. I think it's going to go over well. I do. I'll, I'll give Unless you your shoot doesn't help. I'll give a report. I'll give you a report on the next <laughs> podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Funny. Bye, Peter. Hi, Peter. Thanks for coming in. God, I'm glad that asshole is gone. Right? You guys, <laughs> let's oh, talk about him. Shot, though. It's okay. <laughs> Let's just talk about Peter, you guys. <laughs> Let's just talk about it. Oh, and uh, and and one last thing about this uh, hospital scene uh, mm-hmm. is a uh, little Breaking Bad shout out is T. C. Warner is uh, the actress who plays the nurse who comes in the, for the has makes a very brief appearance. Sir, you can't turn that equipment off. And, oh, yeah. and she was the uh, nurse. She's playing the same character, the nurse who. Uh, who kicked uh, Jesse twice out of the uh, hospital ward when oh, when, li- when little Brock was uh, poisoned with the uh, Lily of the Valley? Oh, wow! So nice. same actress playing the same character. Yeah, little nice. little Breaking Bad nice. shout out. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Nice nice lady. I directed. Oh, her. I didn't like see her this time around because I wasn't on the set. But uh, she was very nice. Actually, yeah, nice is lady. that con- I guess it isn't really continuity yet, but it's, it's sort of it is so pre continuity. It kind of is. I mean, it's yeah. To my mind, it is. It it helps make the world seem more real to me anyway mm-hmm. as a as a viewer. And sure. we approach this as a our, as the first viewers of the show. So sure. anyway, great. Act uh, of TV. How big is the Bible for this show? There really isn't one. There, there I mean, isn't uh, building for all this stuff, but it's very. It's oh, are you? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. so I, don't, I don't know. We're working on I one. I don't know anything. <laughs> I just, uh, I just like there has to be like to keep track of this. But you know what? It's funny. I, don't I get mean, driven I don't to work to... every day. Jen shocks me. You know? I don't mean to interrupt you, Jen, but I know Snaps that. Snaps an nitrate tab under In my other nose. podcasts, we've, we've actually talked about it. And these guys, I know that you've said that um, on other shows they asked to do one, but we never really had one for Breaking Bad. And You are kidding. Didn't you? Why? You're anti, are you anti Bible first? No, I'm, just, I'm just pro lazy. That's what it is. <laughs> I mean, but, but, but Jen is, this... uh, is such a great assistant, is working on it, and I didn't even know about it. Yeah, well, all, all the guys here, uh, Joey and, and Heather and Ariel, we've all been working on building one. Just It's such a huge, not just for Better Call Saul, but going back and pulling stuff from Breaking Bad that we might uh, have to to tailor this sh- this show to as we start to approach the Breaking Bad timeline one mm-hmm. day. So we were keeping Tell track of all the listeners all. what a Bible is. Uh, so it, it's a but that's different than what I've heard as a normal the word as, like when they no. have to write one for the beginning of a show. No, th- so the one that we're putting together has a list of all of the characters. Ours is more like an encyclopedia, Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Exactly. No, I know. Ours is more Unitarian. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I know. It's any information that ever you might need about the show. So a list of all the characters, all the locations, you know, um, all of the episodes. Um, we we had to build one at one point. For uh, for Breaking Bad before the Colombian uh, version of the show was filmed mm. because they needed a, a succinct way to have all of the characters and storylines and locations listed. So Sony came to us and asked us to build one as fast as possible because they block shot all of the the stories oh, not that. by episode but by storyline, mm-hmm. and they would shoot an entire character in one day, which you know Gordon Smith can speak a lot to because he was there in Crazy. in what? Bogota, but. For Sony, when they were pitching the show internationally, they needed a way to concisely, in less than 62 hours, explain what, uh, you know, foreign production companies would need, how many locations and people they would need to craft the show. Wow. But we're trying to get ahead of it. On this one. Right. <laughs> this will include new information, too. Like, uh, Ray Seahorn does not like to be looked uh, directly in the eye. Little, little things like that. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, helpful, but I know, helpful tips I know that, for Have directors. you worked with people like that? Like no, that. you know I, what? I'm trying. I, I always make that joke. It's Vince's fault. I'm sorry, Kelly. No. Yeah, but I Ke- was trying to be Everybody's asking me, hey, I need. we need to, like, get out of here by a certain I'm time. Sorry. And She has a heart out in 20 minutes. Oh, shit. Let's we keep talking. Even, yes. you know. Let's, let's okay. say something of all substance. All I was going to say, though, was that all I was going to ask you, though, was that from what I understood, a, usually a, a Bible for a show is usually written like e- a lot of times before a lot of the episodes are written. Again, mm. all joking aside, uh, uh, yet again, I, I can preface that because I'm being such a 
like like it's like not enough oxygen in the room today and i'm being too goofy goofier than usual in all seriousness i don't understand how anyone could write a, a bible for a show before the show goes on the air but a lot of Be networks ask you right networks they, a lot, and they do and, and and we are grateful and thankful that amc and sony didn't require all that listen you got to have some plan of action but but if you write a you know, there's nothing wrong with writing a Bible before your show goes, but the tricky thing is, it seems to me, and, and, and by the way, there's no one right way to do it, but if you if you have your Bible, per se, that says this character interacts with that character just so, mm -hmm. and, and this particular character has this particular backstory, some of that, absolutely necessary, yes, but on the other hand, I think it can be limiting, uh, potentially. You know, moderation in all things, but if you have two restrictive a Bible, a show Bible, uh, it can limit your uh, potential avenues creatively that you might wish to take later. And but so I never really, we grew Breaking Bad more organically than that. I mean, we had we had a starting point. The guy is a brilliant uh, chemist and uh, now he's a high school teacher. Uh, we're not sure why he used to be a, a Nobel Prize considered chemist and now, and again, nothing, God, I've said this a million times, nothing wrong with being a high school teacher, but clearly there's some issue in this guy's backstory, Walter White's, that he is now teaching high school chemistry when he used to work at uh, Sandia Laboratory. What is that about? But uh, a Bible, a show Bible would insist that you nail down the reason for that. And mm. we, we, we didn't know it for, for years, did, for seasons. Yeah. So that's, to me, to my mind, the argument, the benefit of not having a, a show Bible, because we, we, we instead, we had him teach in high school chemistry, whereas he used to be a Nobel considered chemist. What happened? Well, honest to God, you know, pulling the curtain open here we didn't know for the first couple seasons and i liked it that way i liked leaving my options open mm -hmm. that's why i don't uh that's why i i, I never struck me that it was of, of great importance to write a show bible but i think having said that it's you know again we take notes in the uh, heather uh, marion our, our wonderful uh, uh writer's assistant takes notes in the room and and uh they are an, an excellent resource, but I've never glanced at any of them even once. They're great, but I, I'm sure I, they are great. They're and it's great. not because I'm not interested in her work. I just, I somehow, I just, I don't know why. Just everybody has their own way of doing it. There's no one right way, no one wrong right. way. So. And I think Kelly was was right when she said that what we're crafting is more of an encyclopedia. It's things like, you know, Hamlin wears a wedding ring. Chuck wears a wedding ring in the 103 teaser, but he doesn't wear one in the present. Yeah. It's like, mm. whoa. Oh, oh really? Was that an oversight that now could be explained later? Or was that a No, it was a, it was a choice because mm. it was to show how different Chuck was um, in 103, when we see him, you know, and he, he's not the Chuck that's become sort of a, a recluse mm -hmm. and his life has changed in all of these ways. Yeah. One of the ways his life has changed is he's, he's so put together, he's wearing a wedding ring. And Hamlin, on the other side, though, though we don't see a significant other for him in the first episode, um, I think it was your idea, Vince, to have him wearing a wedding ring when the props department asked because he was supposed to be everything that Jimmy wasn't. And Jimmy wasn't married, so Hamlin should be married. Yeah. These are all things that, yeah, that wow. we run through. And this is why Joey and I are your external hard drives for your brains, <laughs> keeping track I of like this stuff. I like that. You're my That's external hard one. drive. <laughs> I, I, like that. I like that. I do. I do need that too. God knows. Well, let's talk since Ray is here, and let's talk about the scene that we skipped over: is Jimmy painting Kim's toenails. Oh my God, <laughs> my favorite scene. Well, there's a lot of favorite scenes in this episode, but I love this scene. Yeah, talk about this That's scene because this scene, scene is so simultaneously. I'm speaking as a guy here, but I think anyone would feel this way about it. You, you two are so charming together. It is a scene that is simultaneously funny and sexy. It's like a sexy oh, scene. That's good. I haven't seen it. That's right. That's right. I okay. Seen it. Well, tell us about yeah. the rehearsal. It was fun, you know. I mean, it was, like the other nail salon um, in 104, there, there was some navigating. I mean, it's a very different nail salon scene, but the, there's. I love that there's this um, window, these windows you guys give of like how Jimmy and Kim are, because they both have a little bit of masks with other people. Um, yeah, that's true. You're you know, right. And, yeah. and uh, it's just how they are with each other. And I like, I like that audience point of view of jimmy as well who he is with me versus like other people and um and we're each other's confidants and there it was fun it was fun negotiating and navigating that scene um because at first i was being much more um 
open about how much I enjoyed his story because I do think she enjoys him quite a bit. Um, I had some uh, really interesting conversations with Nikki as well with, uh, as with Bob um, about how much Kim uh, is effusive about her emotions, how much she will let someone see that she's and let her guard totally down. She lets her guard down more with him, I think, than with most people. But um, I agree. You're right. But yeah. she's not as free slash spastic as I as I am in real life so it was fun it was just fun finding that balance yeah. of she does she thinks he's hysterical but she's not yeah. she's not quite the laugher and awkward weirdo that I am so it was just fun finding that containment for somebody but still yeah. showing her enjoying um, yeah. him and then you're right it's, it's sexy, a very sexy it's, scene so for my money he, it's very did he do and any I love it I love it yeah did he do any painting at all? Bob did all of the painting oh, in that did. scene. And he really and, sucked at it. And it had to be real. removed every time <laughs> by the lovely Cat Bardot. Did he suck um, at it or was that on purpose? He sucked at it. And that's when, that's actually one of the moments when he did it the first take and Bob did it. Um, and I didn't care how messy yeah. it was. And I thought in Kim's mind, she's putting on sandals and going out. Like, it's not like I'm. Yeah. And I don't think she would change it. And like, that's actually when it felt sexy as the actor in the moment. Right. I was like. I was like, this is so sexy, like that I literally don't care, like what a mess he makes. And, um, <laughs> okay, all right. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think I do. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. intimate. You're, you're is the right. Fact, it's quiet. I, I'm going yeah. to throw this out there. Is the fact that it's blue nail polish is that a throwback to to Breaking Bad? Blue? You know, it was red. It was. Am I allowed to say that? It was red, and because the red nails were featured so heavily in Michelle oh, McLaren's yes. episode yeah. with the woman bre in the breadstick, and it was so specifically written that it was that that um. That Bob and I both thought that um, it should be something else. That's that's that's, that's, a, that's, that's a great them. that's and a then, good reason. And then Kat so you guys got to change. And, and yeah, Kat and brought they, up colors, and then we all asked you guys. Yeah, and then, and then, and then we got a call better. in from from Kat and Melissa and Nina in Albuquerque, and we ran to the writers room and said, "Guys, this is why we don't want to do red nail polish for this scene. Mm -hmm. Is that okay?" And someone said, "Yes, blue sounds great." And then we ran I like back. it. Probably at some level, it was you know thinking of the crystal meth. Or I like maybe, I like the maybe. idea yeah, of that, it was but. Cool. Blue and yeah, blue is the opposite of red. It's a much more yeah. playful color too. Yeah. It's red is very very serious. Yeah, and, you're, you're, yeah. And you yeah, know having true. them with red. And I right. wasn't even thinking of the Jamie Lunar scene. I was just thinking of he's painting her toenails red. That that lends itself to a, a lot more. Well, yeah. yeah. Over if it's rather blue, rather than blue is like a that's a that's a a play very playful. Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't think of it that color. way. Is like red was too like that's honest, like red roses. That's or something. just yeah. me. I didn't off the top of my head right now. Think like him, I don't think would paint her nails red. And yeah. men, um, guys that are not in, he, he's Jimmy doesn't play characters that's necessarily interested in you know. Like, the exact commercial idea of what's supposed to be sexy or pretty is sometimes yeah. so for some reason my I had just been <laughs> my uh, my boyfriend's kids and my boyfriend like the times I've had to have my nails or toenails painted for any kind of events they always want fun weird colors because in their heads they're not thinking like red is appropriate and pink is appropriate and stuff yeah, and so yeah. between me not thinking Kim would do her nails red and not thinking Jimmy would pick because I look at yeah, different yeah, colors yeah. as yeah. a vacation that's a vacation color to me. Really? Like that's the color that you go to the beach and you take a picture of your toenails with the we ocean in the background. <laughs> that funny. photo that you tweet to everybody saying, ah, we had look where I'm at. That's and funny. Bob and I whispered to each other like a million other like parts of that conversation in between those scenes. Ah. We stayed mostly in it the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It was really fun. That's fun. But it gets so sad too when you're talking about your history and your family in it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I talked to Melissa Bernstein who's, who's a lovely... Um, showrunner ipso factor when you guys can't be there or yeah, when, oh absolutely uh, right? and um, oh, no, we and wouldn't be able to do it without she's Melissa. amazing and i talked to her a lot about that and i was like that's a lot of revealing for kim and yeah i love how close she plays her cards to the chest and even when they asked me about yeah. my office and and my um my apartment and i said i don't think she'd have any personal photos it's just like i don't think she yeah shows much yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, and it point. was and yeah for her that was a big reveal for her that was that was hard but um but it was nice and it was directed so well to not be maudlin about it. Yeah. To just say it and move on. Um. Written beautifully and directed beautifully. Bradley and, uh, and Nikki. Uh, yeah. One thing else I like, one other thing I like about this scene is, and I, I, I keep twigging on this, I don't know why, but I find it interesting. Bob's character, Jimmy, is kind of effortlessly funny. Always. Yes. He is just, he, but he doesn't, but I think this is an important, a minor yet <laughs> important distinction. He doesn't go around trying to make people laugh, I don't think. He just is. He just mm -hmm. is. Jimmy is funny. He's got that Irish gift of gab. 
Mm -hmm. and he is just funny. But it's not like he's trying to be a stand-up comic. He's, he's, not, no. he's but very this magnetic, is, the guy is. He's he very, is, he is. People are drawn to him, in, in, and that's like a, an interesting sort of... Uh, the, it's just an interesting sort of thing that some people take with them and some people don't. Yeah, they just have a charisma. Absolutely, he's got it uh, to burn, as do you, and uh, oh, no, the I'm lovely not. right. Thank you. But but my point being, in this particular scene, this is, I think, about the only time ever that the character has attempted to be funny. Yeah. And I love it, it because, uh, and I love how That's you, true, I hadn't yeah, thought yeah. of that. Because He's actually trying to amuse him. Yeah, your character says, what is it, how's it go again? And he goes, oh, yeah. Chandler. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. You're so huge. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's, and it really, it's, 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 I don't know why I, 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 I concentrate on that, but it's, He's trying to be That's funny, and he never otherwise tries, in my mind, to my way of thinking, he never otherwise tries to be funny. He just is yeah, without attempting it. But this is an attempt to make a pretty girl laugh is what right. it is. And the pretty girl's playing along. It's just a very sexy scene. It's just oh, very God. nice. And then it takes a serious turn. Yes. I mean, not too serious, but, I mean, uh, we learn a little something about Kim that clearly she comes, she does not come from, uh, she does not come from greatness. Whatever greatness she's going to achieve in her life is going to be uh, hers and hers alone because she doesn't. She didn't have some kind of. I'm I'm guessing she didn't have some kind of leg up. Right. Just just the little bit of uh, information she dribbles out there with mm -hmm. uh, her scumbag cousin stealing her grandma's meds yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I love so. that. I mean, I love that. And that seems <clears throat> the. And that's part of what's. It's great that it looks like a two-way street, what they give each other. Like, yeah. there's a reason that, that he's about the only person I would say it to. Yeah. yeah. She, yeah. she also helps him sort of define what his next move is going to be. So, I mean, I, yeah. love, I love the idea. I mean, I love what you guys came up with. We're having him take notes on Matlock. Yeah. And Matlock's <laughs> right. well, he's and doing Matlock it suit. Yeah. Which he drew, I believe, with Jennifer Bryan's help. That's actually Bob, his, his own sketches. Yeah. He's a very he, good sketcher. He, he took great yes. notes. He's like, okay, the shirt is either blue or sand colored or whatever. He, he looks a little like David Byrne in the uh, in the uh, in the big suit video from so, the eighties. Yes. <laughs> He's so, got yes. big big shoulders. And so the but next, I like his we should have had him in one with leaves. Yes. <laughs> so, so the next the next thing we see is a you've got a big big sort of. I don't think it's a. I, I think it's a wonder for a good bit of it, but I don't remember. Um, but what it's a big, it? big uh, the scene, scene where in the nursing where, home. The, the, I guess it, uh, the, uh, it sort of starts on house. the cart with the oh. Jello and the yeah. I you know, love the way don't say Jello. Yeah, don't say Jello. And, and it, it's and a gelatinous it, treat. It's most, a gelatinous thing made of horse hooves. Most, most yeah. people will oh, know. Will love that. <laughs> most people will know that is the it's same delicious. nursing home that uh, Uncle Tio was at. Yeah. Yes, oh that is God, that is another that. little a little, little shout out, yep. a little visual shout out. That is exactly where Uncle Tio was when the two we'll cousins visited him. That's what, where he uh -huh. will end up. Where the two cousins visit him and play uh, the, with the Ouija, the Ouija board, board and yep. communicate yep. with him. But that I love the way Nikki shot this scene and and the music. Again, another shout out to Thomas G. and his crew because he put. A, uh, I can't remember if it's Guy Lombardo or somebody. It's some great big band version of the theme from The Third Man, <laughs> which uh, I think may be my favorite movie ever. It's in the top two or three anyway. The Third Man, one of my favorite movies of all time. But this is this is the theme I've music. I've never seen it. Oh, I need to see it. Treat yourself. Anyone really? listening who has not seen The Third Man, treat yourself. Okay. But. Uh, and I've been to Vienna. When I got to go to Vienna, I took that they shot it in Vienna, and okay. I took every tour. I took a sewer tour. I walked through the sewer you where did they the shot the ending. Bus. I did no, every no tour. No spoiler on the thing. We haven't seen the movie, so no, no. But okay. I, but I, I took every tour. I went. There's a Third Man Museum run by a wonderful couple. Really? Uh, I saw a midnight screening of the this Third Man so in funny. Vienna. He's doing I, the Breaking Bad the, tour in Vienna. <laughs> I, I know. Well, anyone who's excited about Breaking Bad tours, this is how I feel about the third man. I was such a geek. I did every wow, tour. I, I went through the Vienna sewer, I mean, with a tour group uh, to see these amazing, uh, although most of the sewer sequence was shot in uh, London on a, on a soundstage. Oh. You can tell the difference between the uh, the cobblestone, the the uh, the, the stonework uh, the, for the real one and the fake one. So anyway, you're one of those viewers. I'm one of those people with the third man. In. So, but it was not my idea to put in the third man music here. It was Thomas G's, and it's a 
it's I Peter, if he were here, if he didn't have to leave, he'd be seconding everything I'm saying about we this is one of our favorite uses of music in the entire season. We really? love this use of music. Love, love, love it. And I love the oh, scene. I can't wait to see it. And he's so marvelously charming. Bob is in this scene. Yeah. He's like, hey, young man. Oh, mighty, mighty, <laughs> mighty strong grip there. Oh, that's my will right in hand. Uh, you were speaking earlier about uh, about improv. That stuff, I believe, that was some improv stuff that mm. he was, that he was, uh, that I Bob I think that's was, the only time yeah. that I, on set, I would hear them tell him that, that he, was some he, improv he, he stuff. But that is ad, also ad, Bob's. Ad lib stuff. And it now was it's Bob's first time where yeah. uh, he's actually wearing the Matlock suit. And yeah, he's, he looks he's good. Changed in it, too. Up and, and it was so cool having a little clip from uh, Matlock, uh, mm -hmm. Andy Griffith. I wish I could have met Andy Griffith. He was, I love oh, yeah, Andy too. Griffith. And it was fun having that little clip. From but Matlock. I love, I love the the way that suit looks on Bob. I think he looks real cute. Yeah, he suit. looks, he looks yeah. adorable. I really, yeah. really like, like that Bob's suit. a good looking guy though. He's good. Yeah, he yeah. is. He's a good looking guy. So that's, uh, we got to get you out of here. I have to uh, go. Yeah. Well, we're, this is like 10 well, little Indians. Right, this is right, like, just, <laughs> right the, quick. The right guests quick. are dropping like flies. Right here. quick, unfortunately, it should, it, it demands more, but um, I guess sort of a little mini spoiler, there will be more, okay? Uh, this is sort of a, like a little... Uh, a taste of what is to come. We see Mike in in the toll booth in a really great a toll booth. I always say that in the parking booth in I a really toll great booth too. Yeah, it's a parking booth. In a really it is, great. It is technically a toll booth. In, you got to pay a, a toll to get past it. That's true. In so. a really great time lapse. I think this is the first time lapse we've seen. I don't know if we're there anymore either. Yeah. It's, it's sort of a Breaking a Bad as very really cool time lapse uh, from day from night to day, and then uh, we see Mike at at uh, the the restaurant where he met Lydia yep. uh, Loyola's yep. which is on Central Avenue Route 66 in Albuquerque um and then he go he leaves and he goes and sort of sits out in his car and scopes out a mysterious woman yeah mm -hmm. and she knows he's there yeah. and she actually stops the car and they have a moment she doesn't seem creeped out but what does that mean Vince some, well, what is you're that you're going to have to wait till uh, a later episode next week you're going to have to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, next week. That's next week, uh, next week, uh, all will be explained. <laughs> and then he goes home, and he's watching a great old uh, Cary Grant movie. And then uh, um, he, uh, a couple of uh, police officers, a couple of police officers come to his door. door, and he says, "You guys are a long way from home." Hmm. And uh, and they say, "So are you." Barry right. Shabaka Henley. Barry mm -hmm. Shabaka Henley and and Omid Abtahi. Uh, and I apologize uh, if I'm pronouncing the gentleman's name wrong. But uh, wait till you see these two gentlemen next week. And Barry Shabaka Henley, who I wrote, I got to write for uh, with, in one episode of Robbery Homicide Division. We'll talk about those guys next week. They do a great job. You will see more of them. Next episode will knock your knock your eyes eyeballs back and rattle until they rattle around in the back of your, your head. I mean, it's, it's a, a medical very, condition. It's very, really get that checked out immediately. Yeah, get that checked out immediately. Uh, but it's uh, next week is a very different episode of Better Call Saul, and I can't wait. We can't wait collectively for you guys to see it. And it was broken as episode five originally. Uh, that's a good point. And, oh, it? and yeah. it became episode six instead. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, it's uh, we, we couldn't be more proud of this show. What's the name of it? Uh, it is called Five O Five Five Five, five Dash O oh. Five O, hmm. and uh, it's a great title. Oh, and one last thing before you go, people should look you up on the Vanity Fair website. <laughs> you are so <laughs> adorable and so funny when you're pitching. That how was fun. tell them about it? Oh, Vanity Fair does this thing called Improv Imagination um, online that they where they ask people to uh, in <clears throat> character or supposing for another character how they would do this fictitious event. And the yeah. question they asked me when I was at the TCAs was uh, what what kind of commercials do you think Saul would have if he was allowed to have any budget and could do any commercial he wanted to do instead of his lower budget ones that we've all seen and loved. So it I did my great. version of that. And it, go, it goes on a little too long, but they asked me to keep going. <laughs> it, so doesn't, it, so it, doesn't, it doesn't go on too long. It's great. It's but, fine. The artwork was amazing for it. Artwork was, I thought that, that might have been you. No, Because no, no, you no. are an artist. They have a guy, they have a guy that gotcha. does all the artwork for No, that. he did He's a great really job. Great. Yeah. But, it, uh, but you, so you made all that up right on the fly. 
That's see, that's hard. <laughs> see, I mean, I make up stuff for a living, but I have the benefit of having lots of time to think. Doing they told it on lots the fly of is time. Tough. Question. Yeah. Lots they of told time. me. They told me a couple of questions that it might be. So I, I had considered things, okay. but then when they when I got there and they were like, "No, go ahead and tell us like what the whole commercial would look like." Then yeah. So. Well, you did a great job. <laughs> thank so. you. Well, thank, thank you so you for much being for here. yeah. Thanks so much for being here, Ray. It was great. Thanks for having me. I'd love to come back. Let me know. And thank uh, thank you, Chris, for helping me out today. You got it. And. Uh, uh, Jen, for you're gonna you're gonna be on every one of them now. You, I know. You're, yeah. a, you're, you're an remember. incredible, trivia an inc- and facts, incredible yes. resource here. You have the young, healthy brain that I used to have many decades <laughs> ago. Yes, before I, you know, <laughs> took a, a knife and surgically removed you're, it. You're the before external hard away. drive, just like you said. Yes. Um, yes. Now it's in a cage, a little aquarium <laughs> in your office. Peter, who I already said thank you to, and Vince, thank you. Yeah, this was fun. This is a good one. This is fun. Good time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, we'll see you next week, and uh, I'm gonna leave it to uh, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Better call Saul. Yeah. Yay!